Welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke, your host for the fourth Thursday. I got it right this time. Last time I said Friday. The fourth Thursday of every month, taking over for Michelle Davis on the show. We're back with my good friend, Cynthia Nutter. She is the owner of CJ Nutter Accounting, which you just started this year. Yep. I mean, like real recently, like the last part of the year, yep, right? Last quarter. Last quarter. So, and her mission is to promote and empower small business. And what I really like about what your mission statement is, is that you're there to protect the financial security of hardworking individuals. Right. And I know a lot of accountants, I don't hear them talking about it that way. And I think that's really cool that that it's not just about the numbers or the profits. It's really about financial security and it's about people. Right. And that's what I really like about what you're doing. So tell us how you got started in accounting because that story goes way back. That goes all the way back to the Enron collapse right. back in 2001. We could probably spend all day talking about that nightmare. Yes. But tell us how you got started in accounting. Also, when I was, it was at the time where I was thinking about where, like what I wanted to study. I always thought I was going to study law. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember about the time that Enron collapsed, there was so much drama surrounded, or, you know, and there was so many, there were so many people that um, suffered. And I lived in Houston at the time, so I, I watched people go home with boxes in their hands. Yeah. I, um, I literally went to a retirement party one week, and then the next week, you know, they lost everything, their entire entire um, savings, entire, all their investments were just down the tubes. Um, and they had a lot of invest, a lot of holdings in Enron companies. So um, it was hard watching people who should have been retiring have to get jobs at Walmart, um, you know, anything to get by. It was mm -hmm. just heartbreaking for me to watch that. And um, I just remember being glued to the TV and anything to do with Enron, I just, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand, I was so young. I didn't understand what was going on and it, why it's, people's lives were. It was super confusing even if you weren't young. Right. Um, and there's a great documentary about Enron. It's, I think it's called The Smartest Guys in the yes. Room. Have you seen it? Yes. Um, the stuff that was going on at Enron, it was bonkers. It was uh, arrogance and hubris and uh, just to the to the next level stuff. Right. But, so you, we're very confused about what was going on. Right, and I wanted to understand it, and I saw these people that, I guess now I know that they're auditors. Mm -hmm. I was like, who are those people? That's what I want to do. I want to investigate this kind of crime. Like, mm -hmm. This is horrible. So many lives are being you know, destroyed because of you know, just the criminal activity, not only the criminal activity, mm -hmm. but also how people will twist and bend the law to, you don't even have to be a criminal in order to destroy lives. Mm -hmm. You just have to be extremely selfish and, and um, willing to hurt other people. And, and our legal and especially our generally accepted accounting practices are supposed to prevent that kind of thing from right. happening. Right. Well, before, before Enron, um, that wasn't in the scope of an auditor to do. Mm -hmm. They weren't supposed to determine whether or not they were subject to fraud. They just were supposed to make sure that um, the financial statements were accurately represented. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until they passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act mm -hmm. where um, it is now the responsibility of an auditor to, to some degree, you know, express whether or not there was concern for fraud. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, now also the officers have to sign off on that right. so because that was one of the um that's a lot a lot of how people got away with it in the past was saying mm -hmm. well i didn't i didn't know i didn't know now they mm -hmm. have to know and they have to sign off that they know exactly what's happening they have to take responsibility so yeah so you studied accounting yes and then you did accounting for other people for a long long time tell I us did. about that um i worked in the private sector uh for the first part of my accounting career and then I went into the, uh, the public industry mm -hmm. and I helped a couple accountants develop their uh, bookkeeping practice mm -hmm. portion of it. I got into tax work um, and the, the rest is history okay. of that. So, <laughs> so, tell, so tell us why you left that to start your own firm. When I went into public accounting, I worked for a very good CPA mm -hmm. out here, and the way that the work was conducted was very carefully. It was it, he was very much in alignment with the way that I thought, mm -hmm. um, caring about making sure that 
it was all about your client, making sure that we were doing everything to protect the client, mm -hmm. making sure that our work, even though the client didn't see our work, making sure that our work was protecting the client in case of an mm -hmm. audit, in case anybody came back after them. Um, when I went to work for other public accounting firms, because I wanted to spread my wings to fly, mm -hmm. so to speak, I wanted to become an auditor. That was always part of the plan. Um, so when I went to other accounting firms, I realized that the quality of work that these big accounting firms do, it's really not, it's really about the bottom line for them, mm -hmm. which I understand you want to you want to make money. We're all in business. We're all, right. we're all, you know, businesses make money. That's what we're supposed to do, right? So. Right, right. So while I always looked at the quality of work as an issue, mm -hmm. I still tried to you know, do as they asked me to do, but it was, it just became increasingly difficult to um, do what they wanted me to do, knowing that there was a way that I could be protecting the client in the way that I presented mm -hmm. work, because I saw so many ways that they could, not that these other companies did anything intentionally, but they just, it was careless in some ways. And I just always have my, like, like you said, I always think about the individual. It sounds like you, you put a human face on every, on every client. Absolutely. And keep that in mind as you're, as you're doing your work for them. Absolutely. So, so we're coming to the end of a year. It's almost the end of 2018. We're about to start 2019. What's some advice or what's some tips you might have for some small business owners or even some families about their accounting or the financial planning coming up? What are the things they should be thinking about as the new year kicks off? I think it's new. I mean, I think it's the same for every new year. Okay. Um, get your books in order. Get your books okay. in, li in line. Make sure that um, you're on top of it sooner than later. Mm -hmm. You know, and that way your CPA, your accountant, mm -hmm. um, can get through the tax season smoothly with you. Okay. Um, yeah, I would just say get. So what, what does that mean to get books in line? Like what are some of the common mistakes, some of the common gotchas that you see when a small business owner? Well, one is probably if you're a small business owner and March comes around and you're like, mm -hmm. here, do my taxes, you're probably already behind the curve, right? Right, So right. What, what else do you see? What are some of the gotchas that small business owners, especially new small business owners might have um, for their first year of going through taxes as a small business? Wow. Um, hmm. I guess just not having every, not having your bookkeeping done through, for the year. If you wait till the last minute to get it done, it's going to take longer, and your CPA is going to have to do. Gonna, somebody has to put in the work. Right. And so if you can go through a bookkeeper like myself, you can mm -hmm. go through. Uh, well, I also do taxes, but um, if you utilize somebody throughout the year, you prevent yourself from getting the surcharge. Mm -hmm at the beginning of the following year. Right, so keep your books current. Right. Keep them clean, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Save those receipts. Yep. And you can do that digitally now, right? You can save all that digitally. You don't have to have all this paper hanging around. Right. So keep your books current. Keep them clean. Keep them up to date. Right. Because um, you can do that yourself if you're so inclined to. If not, absolutely find someone to do that for you, right? Right. You're much better off spending a little money than you are spending time driving yourself crazy. But have you know make sure that's done because when it does come when it when it comes to your taxes especially this time of year if that's not already done the accountant's going to bill you for doing right. all that work to get them cleaned up so right so all right any other any other financial tips or accounting tips for us for 2019 um i would say that a lot of business owners that i see have a hard time distinguishing the difference between the federal tax laws and the local tax laws. Okay, yeah, really important. There's, yeah, that, that is very important. Um, one example is, you know, if you have employees. Mm -hmm. uh, the federal government has their um, outline for what they consider an employee, and then the state has their outline. Mm -hmm. The state's usually going to be a little bit more stringent. Uh, a lot of Especially if you're in California. If you're watching this in California, changes this year, so. Right, right. So, a lot of what... Um, business owners do is they pay attention to the federal law and they're like, okay, it's an employee, so I can pay them as a contractor and avoid paying employee, employee taxes. Um, and then the state will come in and audit and then you'll have fines and penalties to pay on top of that. And so, you don't want to do that. No. So, all right, well, thank you so much for being here Thanks today. For me. Sit right there because we're going to have you, we're going to bring the others back for our panel discussion. Okay. But before we go, tell us who you're looking to connect with and tell us how our audience can get in touch with you. So any business owner uh, is who I'd like to connect with that, especially business owners that are needing bookkeeper um, or a tax preparer. Uh, 
I offer uh, part-time CFO services as well as um, staff development services. So anybody who already has an established bookkeeping department in their business who might need somebody to come in who's experienced and knows how the services uh, should present, I um, also help their staff uh, learn the bookkeeping processes. Um, I like to also, let's see, who else? People like this guy who do uh, business consulting. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always looking to connect with people. So, but yeah. but it's not about me today. But thank you so much for being here. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna come back in just a few minutes with our panel discussion. I'm Jason Leduc. This is Geeks Are Sexy. We'll be right back.